Welcome to the No More Late Feast podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle, and we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the 2001 movie, A Knight's Tale, with our guest, Johnny. Welcome, Johnny. Hey, Hi, guys. Johnny. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Excited. <laughs> If you missed our earlier episode, our trailer episode, where we introduced Johnny because he is Jackie's younger brother, pause and go check out that episode to get to know him a little bit better and uh, you'll enjoy it. It's some fun, fun little stories there that we told. But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. If you love the podcast and you want to support us, here's a few ways you can. Did you know writing a review and or rating us helps us to get more listeners? If you want to be featured and help us grow, head to Apple, Spotify, Podchasers, Good Pods, or your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast platform to make sure that you can keep up with new episodes. If you like what you hear and you want exclusive content, stickers, lives, and access to our Burn Odd Spotify playlists, head on over to patreon.com slash no more late fees and become a Patreon bestie. Uh, we love our Patreon besties. We do. Johnny's a Patreon bestie. I'm one. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, dude. <laughs> we love and appreciate your support. We do. <laughs> I felt like I'm I was about to... everybody. You're very well. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was giving a PBS commercial there for a second. Let's get into the movie. So, A Knight's Tale is about a peasant born William Thatcher who begins a quest to change his stars, win the heart of an exceedingly fair maiden, and rock his medieval world. With the help of friends, he faces the ultimate test of medieval gallantry, tournament jousting, and tries to discover if he has the medal to become a legend. It stars Heath Ledger, Mark Addy, Shannon Sossman, Rufus Sewell, Paul Bettany, and Alan Tudyk, who I love very, very much. It's written and directed by Brian Hazelin. And it's based on The Knight's Tale by Jeffrey Chaucer. You can currently find it on Netflix. But before we start, let's get into our ratings rewind. So you know the drill. Before we get into the movie, we'll reveal the rating our Y2K versions of ourselves would give. Then at the end, we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating. Our scale consists of, would buy it, would buy it again. The best would play on repeat. Five day rental. Would watch again. Two day rental. Ah, okay, but nothing to write home about. And same day rental. Medieval trashy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so Johnny, what is your YTK rating? I think honestly, back in the day, I mean, that's when I was, you know, going to the Renaissance Festival, and you know, this is this movie spoke to me as, as a growing growing guy. So uh, would buy it, would buy it again for sure. I love this movie. Yeah. So for me, I remember this being a Conley family movie. I feel like we watched it a lot. I definitely owned it. I told my Spider-Man trailer story on the Spider-Man episode, <laughs> how we got it as a pre-release and it had the Spider-Man trailer and it was recalled due to 9-11. It's a would buy it, would buy it again for me. Danielle? I don't want you guys to be mad at me. I'm about to hang up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw this movie. Danielle. I just said that. Okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, but it means that it's not going to be one of our 2022. No, it's fine. Okay. I think it's fine. I get so nervous, you know. But no, never... be, because I have some, some opinions. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I I was surprised because I thought I saw this movie, but I didn't. <laughs> I don't know if I just saw clips of it in passing. I probably saw it on while I was at your house, but I I, I was watching the movie. And I was like, "What's happening next?" <laughs> I was like, "Didn't know." And this it's was not brand new to you. Brand brand new. Not like 
normal where it's like I kind of remember but not really were yeah. you into it it was you know <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get into okay. it I didn't have any bad feelings like anyways so Danielle tell us about the box office so this movie had a budget of 65 million dollars and it made a 117.5 million dollars worldwide one of the funny things about this movie, it got really good reviews from like our boy Lil Raj, but something weird happened with this movie. Newsweek revealed in June of 2001 that print ads that contain glowing comments from a film reviewer who did not exist for at least four films released by Columbia Pictures, including A Knight's Tale and The Animal from 2001. The fake critic was named David Manning and was created by a Columbia employee who worked in the advertising department. Manning was fraudulently presented as a reviewer for the Richfield <laughs> Press, a small Connecticut weekly. Look at Lies. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. That I is... could see faking reviews for the animal, but not for this movie. <laughs> Isn't the animal, isn't that the one with Rob Schneider? Yeah. And Colleen from Survivor. <laughs> yeah, they needed, they needed all the reviews. Not that one. Well, now I'm curious because it says four films. So I want to know what the other two films are. that I have... want to Google it. I'm going to do that. <laughs> David Manning. So you know what, Jackie? We should write a review on the podcast on Apple. And, by and David ha- Manning. By David Manning. <laughs> <laughs> He's back, y'all. Oh, there's a whole Wikipedia page about him. Ooh. Okay. So, A Night's Tale, describing Heath Ledger as this year's hottest new star. The Animal, another winner. Like, another winner. (laughs) It's not a sequel. Like, Uh, was it... (laughs) <laughs> Did this come out after Deuce Bigelow? Maybe that's what they're referencing. Yeah, maybe it was maybe, another Rob maybe. Schneider winner. If that's a thing. Yeah, I don't think it's a thing. I understand Ledger because this was his first starring role, so maybe it was to add some legitimacy. Maybe they were worried because he didn't lead a movie before, and they put a lot of money in this budget. Sixty million dollars is huge. Oh. On June 10th, 2001, on an episode of Le Show, host Harry Shearer conducted an in-studio interview with David Manning. The voice of Manning was provided by a computer voice synthesizer. What? They really went deep with this conspiracy. (laughs) Oh, oh, I found the other movie. Okay. On August 3rd, 2005, Sony made an out-of-court settlement and agreed to refund $5 each to dissatisfied customers who saw Hollow Man, <laughs> oh. The Animal, The Patriot, A Night's Tale, and Vertical Limit. You could keep my money on The Patriot. Now, I know that was a propaganda movie, but I fucking loved every minute of it. <laughs> it came out on the my birthday, and I was rocking with Heath, Mel, said was. And <laughs> there was the other guy that played Ephraim on a TV show. I can't remember the, but the cast, I can't wait for us to do that movie, actually. I remember very little of The Patriot. I remember playing the scene where the guy gets a cannonball to the head in slow motion. Of course you would. And was Johnny that. right there with I you? I think I remember that. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was just, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And we were like, ooh, play again. <laughs> This is bringing me flashbacks to when Marky was on and Jackie was telling us what a wonderful babysitter she has been over the years. You know, (laughs) they're educated and they love movies. So I think job well done. Out of the back. Probably if it it wasn't for for that. (laughs) Johnny was also there when we saw a goofy movie in the theater and I let them roll down the the aisles while we were waiting. I don't remember that. Maybe I got a concussion or something. Oh, Johnny. (laughs) I do remember that story. Yeah. (laughs) All right, Jackie, let's get into this. Okie dokie. So this movie is about jousting in medieval times and knights. If you didn't know from the title. (laughs) I felt really uneducated when 
the character of Jeffrey Chaucer was talking, I was like, oh, is this the, is he referencing the Canterbury Tales? But then I was like, no, that's not it. <laughs> I don't um, think it is. Yeah, it's not. I, I'm going to say it's I think, not. I, I think this movie was based on a chapter within Canterbury Tales. Okay, yeah. so maybe I'm not. It is. Look at a bitch. <laughs> Danielle, did you high five yourself just I sh- the, <laughs> the fuck I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that was the first time I realized because I watched it just uh, the other night. And uh, yeah, I did a, a little more in depth research because we were going to talk about it. And I was like, holy, holy mackerel. This guy was based on a living person. So that was pretty cool. So I remember we had to read the Canterbury Tales in, I want to say maybe junior year of high school. And I was like, this is definitely some white people shit for sure. And I (laughs) do not want to continue to read that. These stories don't make no sense to me. Felt like the Bible in the sense of like all the different names and you get kind of confused in the beginning. No offense to be, you know, Bible readers, but you know, that Genesis stuff, don't act like it's not confusing with all the names. Okay. <laughs> it's giving Lord of the Rings vibes with all those names. I might want to relook and see if uh, maybe being older, I, I might get it a little bit better. But back then I was like, give me Nancy Drew. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we are introduced to... Oh, there's some titles and they say over the hill, former champion. It was the end, but for his squire, William, it was merely the beginning. And then we see a knight. We see it. And we see a dreadlocked Heath Ledger. Don't, don't think you, they slid that past me of like, oh, what's going on here? Yes. And I was very upset when he cut his hair and shaved we had a very different experience then oh i (laughs) like i like dirty dreadlock heath ledger (laughs) i was like someone get this boy a comb (laughs) (laughs) so the knight was in the middle of a jousting competition he didn't take a hit well and he's dead now And there's two minutes before they have to forfeit the match. His squires are panicking because they haven't eaten in three days and they need this win. And essentially all he had to do was stay on the horse for the third round. And so after much yelling and debate and punching of a dead knight by (laughs) Watt played by Alan Tudyk. um, So (laughs) much like he's so chaotic in this movie yeah he's awesome he's such a great character actor and I just feel like maybe more recently people are starting to recognize his talents in in different like movies and tv shows he was in doom patrol more recently played a great villain his comedic timing is like a whole nother level I personally love him from Firefly. Yeah, he's in that right. new show where he's an alien, right? He 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 plays an alien. In yes, it. yes. I forgot what it's called though. Like the neighborhood alien or something. Yeah, he's just oh, he's such a good actor. Well, yeah. and he's a really talented voice actor too. Yeah, he he voiced Hey Hey, and he voiced K two S O from Solo, mm. I believe. Yeah, he is also a birthday twin of mine. <gasps> How he was lucky born March are you? 16th. I know. <laughs> so we big Alan Tudyk fans in this house. Ken loves Firefly. Anytime he comes on screen, he just yells "Wash." So and it's a resident alien, not new resident. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. So yeah, so William is like, well, I'll do it. Like I'm wearing, I'll just put on the armor. I just have to stay on the horse. I practice with the knight. I can't remember the knight's name. Not relevant. Sir, yeah. Sir oh, well, it does come back again. What was the knight's name again? Doctor? Sir Ector. Yes. Uh, All right. So, he just was like forgotten though. He must've been like, yeah. a, he, he must've been like a douchebag because nobody cared about him after, after he died. Like where's yeah. Sir Ector's wife and his friends being like, and also why why did they leave him for so long like 
for him to just die. Like they, I feel like his squires would have helped him take his armor off was because he was dead for a little while, right? Like it wasn't no, just I like- No, I think, I think, I think the, the flies were just like- they said he smelled like uh, I know I think that was just more, I think. <laughs> that's true <laughs> I think those were just storytelling elements okay because uh, I think what happened was like after the second round because it, there isn't much time in between rounds gotcha unless like your armor's damaged or you have an injury and even then it seems like there's a time limit so he, I I imagine he was just like I just need to sit down for a minute and rest and then he just died damn it's a yeah. way to go in a jousting competition <laughs> <laughs> by a tree in nature i don't yeah. know sure i was just gonna say i really like how the dialogue in this movie is very poetic like yeah even, even i'm gonna call him robert baratheon the, the, the <laughs> bigger squire guy yes he he says uh, to to hit it home he says the spark of his life is covered in shite i was like oh that's such a good line <laughs> it's so beautiful that's so it's a beautiful, beautiful way to say someone has died. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure they probably try to just like keep up with Ch- Chaucer and his words, because clearly we we figured that out with Bettany playing that role and how mm-hmm. just like very superfluous his commentary is. So yeah, so William puts on the armor and he stays on the horse, takes the hit, stays on the horse, wins. And so, and he takes a hit to the face and it's very lucky that he does because the king who's awarding him is like, take your helmet off, sir. And so they have an excuse of like, he can't, it's stuck on his face right now. Like, can you just give us the weird gold feather? And, And all the prizes throughout the movie are just like weird gold trophies. Yeah. That then they have to turn around and sell for money. Yeah, I guess it's like because giving like work that they have to do, She's like, <laughs> all right, well, cool. Now I have to go find the. But dealer. any nobleman probably would just keep them. They don't. I don't know if they probably all needed to That's have true. the gold for money as much as you know. They're nobles, like they should yeah. have money. But That's Sir Actor, it seemed like he didn't because like all of his squires didn't have money. Maybe he just didn't pay them yet. Like he had to finish the tournament. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, that was a little confusing, but anyway, they're, they're able to hawk the, the gold peacock feather for 15 coins. So it's five coins a piece. And then William's like, Hey guys, we can do this. Like I can continue competing and winning money. And they're like, first off, you suck at jousting. You're okay <laughs> with swords, but suck at jousting. Yeah. And I want my money. I want to go home. And he like literally runs away with their money. And they have to chase him a little bit. And they have to chase him. And it's not that, like, and then they get into a fight and then they wrestle on the ground. And then they're all laughing afterwards. They're like, bro, give me my damn money, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love that both of them have like two different reasons why they want the money. Robert, but that Robert, why can't I say his last name now? Bar- Baratheon. Baratheon. So Robert Baratheon wants to go home and, and home is England. And the other, what's his name again? So Robert Baratheon is Roland. Uh, Roland. And uh, Alan Tudyk is what? W-O-T. Okay, so Roland wants to go home and Watt wants food. That's all he cares about. I very much relate with his character <laughs> when he, like, his motivation is like, I want to eat good food. And yeah. I don't want to hear none of this crap, William, about you trying to pretend to be, like, like you said, because he doesn't have the skills set first and foremost, and to pretend to be a, a noble, that could be some really bad implications and repercussions, I, I should say. Mm-hmm. So they took a big risk of saying yeah. yes. And I'm just thinking now in that in that scene, the backdrop is, is of, a, of a guy who's hanging on raptors hung. Mm-hmm. Dead, right? so they're having this conversation about, you know, let's take this humongous risk. And you just have that ominous thing in the background, right? Like <laughs> to set the tone. But 
you know, paid off, I guess. Yeah. Well, it, it paid off because they were hella lucky later when like they didn't think their plan through. So they go into like, we get a training montage pretty much of them trying to get William up to par and the montage is very hilarious because they're dumb they're they're (laughs) all really dumb just stupid pretty much it's that classic montage where it's like he's terrible in the beginning and then he's like an elite uh, athlete (laughs) right yes like you know like two days later he's good to go (laughs) he's ready to go and i feel like if i feel like at some point i don't know i think do we start the movie where we start to see some of like the modern Mm -hmm. like rock music starting to play so that was one of the cool things that set this movie apart because obviously we've had medieval time movies i I don't even know what what period of time you call this because it's not like is it the dark ages is that not it's like the 1300s whenever that time period is (laughs) well you don't see many period pieces or even before this movie you didn't see a ton of period pieces where they would mix in kind of modern elements and so this entire soundtrack was just like Queen and Bowie and just really amazing music from more of our time mixed in so that that was fun to make it I don't know kind of historical fiction yeah Yeah. I think that's yeah that was awesome I love that the 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 we will rock you in the beginning of the movie it really like set you set the pace for for a good time so i really like that love a queen movie (laughs) queen song in a movie and and they said they purposely did this because in most medieval movies which i i just looked up and medieval times are also called the middle ages or the dark ages so it's all synonymous and most period movies like this they play period appropriate music during those montages well it doesn't resonate with a an audience audience. of today correct and so they purposely chose songs that would resonate with a modern audience to convey the feeling they needed to feel in those scenes which was smart because I feel like after this movie we start to see this happen so much in other movies or we get to play Mm -hmm. with period pieces like you know, what the Pride and Prejudice or Pride and Prejudice and Zombies or something like that. We had the Abraham Lincoln Vampire Vampire Slayer (laughs) movie. So we, we've started to see it kind of even Even in like Ella Enchanted, they use the same strategy. When I tell you that I love that movie. (laughs) I really enjoy that too. And that Anne Hathaway's rendition of Somebody to Love is just it's I good love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very particular about McQueen. I know. I'm sorry. I know. I know. She was good. Um, she can then you know. It's paved the way for like currently we have Bridgerton that brings in yes. modern mu- music into their scenes. And it's just that that little thing that you can do to connect an audience with a piece that might be not sent, uh, set in a contemporary time. Yeah, 100%. So, yes, and the montage is set to Low Rider. <laughs> Which, Johnny, don't you love Cheech and Chong movies? Yeah, yeah. I, just, <laughs> I, just, I love Cheech and Chong, Up in Smoke. Oh, <laughs> uh <laughs> This is after the montage, he is freshly shorn and shaven, ready to go to his first competition. They're fighting over who gets to ride the horse, as you do. I like how he's like shaven and kind of clean, but he still looks dirty. It's, it must be an, it's an aesthetic thing. I I get it. I didn't mind it. I was just like, very handsome. It's like, I felt like, I felt like my grandma was going to come and say, you wash your back. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> why your back dry so they are heading up the road and then enter a butt-ass naked paul ben naked <laughs> is, is this about the point danielle where you're like i've never seen this movie before. i don't you know what's funny i i didn't I, it's because i've just seen so many pieces of this movie and like 
on social and clips. I pro- I'm telling you, I probably saw it in passing mm-hmm. because I wasn't surprised he was naked, actually. Like, I wasn't shocked, but it was interesting how many times I saw Paul Bettany's butt in this <laughs> scene. And he did a great job being naked. <laughs> And Paul Bettany plays Jeffrey Chaucer. He has a bit of a gambling problem, hence the no clothes. And he is trudging, as he (laughs) put it. (laughs) Yeah, and but he doesn't tell us right away, or Mm -mm. I say us, but he doesn't tell the group right away that he has this gambling problem. He he has a way with words for sure. But I can write. Yes, he does brag that he can write. That's one of his skills, one of his superpowers. Now, they wrote this role especially for Paul Bettany, which, duh, why wouldn't you? I think Uh, he did a really good job. I mean, he's such a good actor and he's such a good, you know, I can see him in in any play in the world, you know, he's so good. Let's talk about the cast for a second. So this is where I take great umbrage. So Heath Ledger is William, great. Alan Tudyk and Mark Addy as Roland and Watt, fantastic. Got it. Obviously, Paul Bettany as Jeffrey Chaucer. Perfection. Top notch. Yes. Can't stand Shannon Sossaman. What? I think I knew that. And I can't stand. Don't you say it. Rufus Sewell. Oh, uh, well, that's because he plays a really, he does a good job of just being an asshole in every movie he's yeah. in, pretty much. But I don't even, like, there are actors that I don't like because they were such assholes in movies. But that's not this. That's not this. This mm-hmm. is just, I, I like, I just feel like in my soul, those two were so miscast that it ruins the movie for me. <laughs> really? Yes. I, as soon as I see Rufus, I know he's going to be the bad guy. I, I'm always thrown for a loop, the rare chances he's not. So I think he plays an uppity nobleman pretty well. Now, Shannon, she does say in some interviews that she has some regrets about her performance in this movie. This was her very first movie ever. And she was very green. Like, I don't even think she had acting lessons kind of situation. She was definitely, and I I don't want to cut her down in that way, but I feel like she was definitely hired for vibes and looks. You know what I'm saying? I did. I will say that bitch's costumes, all of her looks. The costumes were on point. The hair was not. Those were some... Those were some <laughs> those were some choices. Yes. But I can't blame her for that because she didn't pick it. No, no, no. I'm not blaming her. I, I just I felt like we had so many great up and coming actresses during that time. Yeah. That I I just it was do you so like her in any other movies? I don't. But I don't know if it's because I dislike her so much in this movie. <laughs> Like my brain is like, we don't give her a second chance. Now, I believe that somehow she's connected to Gwyneth Paltrow and I can't remember how. So I'm going to look that up as you continue your rant to why you hate these people. Okay. (laughs) So if I were casting, I probably would have done like a Christian Slater as Count Admar. Like, I feel like he can make it slick and like, I don't know, give some, some range to the character. I think that was it. It was just like very flat. Like he was the bad guy and like, he's British. Yeah. (laughs) That's not an excuse. It is like, (laughs) they are, can be very dry. I feel like he. I don't know. I didn't really have a problem with him, but I get it. I get it. Okay, so I knew this stuck out to me. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the story. (sighs) So she, Sossaman, I hope that I said her name right. She was pursuing a career in dance and she never planned to become like a professional dancer. It was more like she just loved it. 
And around that time of her trying to, you know, be a dancer, she ended up modeling first. So she was like in Sassy Magazine, American Eagle Outfitters and all that other stuff. And then she were, was in a bunch of videos for like Daft Punk and the Goo Goo Dolls. And then she was discovered by casting director Francine Maisler. I think is her name. Yeah, Maisler, while assisting a fellow DJ at Gwyneth Paltrow's brother's birthday party. And okay. oh, this is going to piss you off even more. You ready? Ready. Sossman beat Kate Hudson for the lead female role in A Knight's Tale. Oh, God. She was cast <laughs> as Lady Jocelyn, the love interest, obviously. But <sighs> what do you think about that, Jack? I mean, Kate Hudson is a much better choice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a Christina Ricci could have been a good, like there are so many better choices that could have been made in this role that it's just, <laughs> yeah. Because is she Brit- Is she even British? <laughs> no, not in even the slightest. No. Mm-mm. Sorry. Yeah. So so disappointing. Yeah, Kate Hudson, man. <laughs> I I don't know how how who what where who how what. Like even get get Jennifer Connelly in there. Get the whole Bentley family. Like <laughs> something. I don't like. I I don't understand how Heath Ledger, Kate Hudson. That you know, if they were in that movie together, I guarantee those two probably would have ended up dating. Yeah. Like. He loves him a blonde. He does. Michelle Williams, Heather Graham, and Naomi Watts. He loved him a blonde. He loved him a blonde for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying, I feel like there were much better choices for those two roles. <laughs> Clearly. Back to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> After the messages, we'll, we'll be, be right, right back. <laughs> Um, Chaucer's like, can you just like, let me go with you. I'll write for you. I'll, I'll, I'll write all your paperwork. So it looks like you're of noble birth because you have to present it at every tournament that you go to. And all I ask is that you clothe me, feed me, and like, let me ride your horse for a little while. He does something in the scene, super gross. He gets a thorn in his foot and he takes it out with his mouth. <laughs> Got to do it. That was it for me. Paul Bettany was not looking hot at all in the entire <laughs> movie after he did that shit. I was like, nope. But I do love that Watt was like, let me let me come over here and talk to you for a second, homie. Let you <laughs> know so what's good. up. I will rock your ass if you fuck shit up. Like he was very so violent. Very violent. <laughs> what did he keep saying? Like hey. he said it. He just said pain, pain. <laughs> but he he said some word, an F word. I meant to look it up. Yeah, he was, was not playing. Like, if they didn't run into Paul Bettany. They would have been screwed. Yeah, it was their plan that they hadn't run into this guy with a very specific skill set. <laughs> now I'm thinking of Taken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They they didn't think things through not oh. in the slightest. Yeah. So essentially, Chaucer becomes William's herald because apparently at the beginning of the tournament or each event, you have to have like a hype man, and so that's what he became. It's my dream, man. Personal hype man. Yes. Before I walk into a room, <laughs> here he, here he. Let's get some subs, Danielle. <laughs> Say that again. Did I say it wrong? <laughs> I think I heard it wrong. What is it? <laughs> say it your way. No, you already <laughs> said I already said it. What is it? Hear ye, hear ye. Whatever. <laughs> A-A-B-E, bitch. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So now we are in town prior to the tournament starting and William is just on his horse, trotting through town, singing a tune. 
and he sees a woman in white. And it looks like Lisa yeah, Simpson Lisa, hair, yeah, Simpson. but like yeah, as a hat. I have like a little little hat on, yeah. <laughs> she just looks like a little baby, you know, yeah. like that's her christening outfit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So he is enraptured, but he kind of loses sight of her. So he's looking for her all over. How'd she get upstairs so fast? That was uh, that, <laughs> that, that was did throw me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? And he's talking to himself like, I need you to speak to me. <laughs> hey, William man. has zero game. Okay. Zero. Less than zero. <laughs> And so he finally sees her and follows her and starts talking to her and what's your name, blah, blah, blah. She come, kind of claps back. She's like, would you care if I was ugly? Oh, so bitch, you trying to say you cute? Yeah, she was very, she knew, she was very confident. She was a very confident lady. <laughs> she was. <laughs> he he put he pulled up in his horse in the church. How you don't know you're in the church? That deacon or whoever he was was not having it. <laughs> He's like, sinners. <laughs> <laughs> and because William was so smitten with, we find out her name is Jocelyn, that he didn't realize he was entering a church on a horse. And so he has to leave. And as he's leaving, she's like, just call me a fox. And so he goes, okay, foxy lady. And then leaves because oh, she kept calling him a hunter yes i was like these are all very interesting terms and he doesn't learn her name for quite a bit the shenanigans the back and forth the way that dating and courting used to be back in the day who's got time for that <laughs> i mean it's still that way now you're right that's why i'm still saying <laughs> and but like she's as william's leaving she's giggling about it she th- finds it funny and whoever the the church elder is like turns around and he's like, are you laughing? She's like, only to keep from weeping. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> like, and I love how he tries to get her to kiss his ring, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, oh, it's so cute. And he gets kind of thrown off by that. But it was he, he's very full of himself, this this priest preacher man i don't know what he was yeah she was very full of her i mean the whole conversation was about how her 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 beauty was such a a, a, a distraction curse, you know? yeah yeah uh. <laughs> what was, <laughs> was she like was she a lady was she a princess like what was she i swore she, someone said princess at one point i was like Wait, yeah what? she was daughter of the king interesting of a yeah, king that's cool or a lord i don't know at one point the count comes back I just call him the count because I can never remember his name and he says like I'm I, I thought he said I'm asking the king for her hand but I could have been wrong but Are I think multiple- sometimes I think if you were in the court I think you might maybe you might have to get permission from the king or the to to marry someone in in court no but he says I thought he said the king her father oh maybe I I just because like when they would have the jousting you would see the king you I'm guessing it was like whoever was who realm it was I guess you would see those people sitting in the middle and I was surprised that like when she would come to watch the jousting matches that she wasn't sitting up there with them so maybe it's somebody and maybe it wasn't the king of that particular tournament maybe yeah i don't know or i could just be wrong it's happened before so i mean you're probably right i just i I, that's why i asked i have no idea no but it doesn't make sense because of the whole prince edward thing yeah i don't know ignore everything i said (laughs) (laughs) so they're talking about like essentially in the tournament jousting is the main event So that's where all the prize and the prestige comes in. And although William is better with a sword and is, can win the sword events, they're like, we really need to focus on jousting because that's where you're going to like turn heads and, and win lots of money. We also 
find out due to Chaucer's nakedness again that he has a gambling problem. He is in debt and the debt collectors have come to collect. And so William William says pretty much that he will pay to get him, get Chaucer back or whatever, and he'll pay him after he wins. And Chaucer... It's interesting because I do remember reading the tales about those two characters in the Canterbury Tales. He's like, I will get you back. You will be forever remembered in like my writing and my stories Mm -hmm. or whatnot. So I thought that was a cool like reference to their characters. Yeah. 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 And then in the next scene, they have a sword event. At first, William's kind of getting his bearings but then he comes back kicks some ass and then the herald is is hyping him up Chaucer's hyping him up and no one reacts when he's done (laughs) until Roland's like yeah and then everyone starts cheering well the reason for that is because all of the extras were checks yeah they and they didn't understand what Chaucer was saying (laughs) (laughs) and so Roland the actor that plays Roland Mark Addy realized that and so he yelled yeah he improv the yeah and that got everyone to cheer and they liked it so much they 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 left it in in. yeah Yeah. that was good I watched that scene. It's just, it's now that you know that, it's funny just to see the crowd just kind of be silent after <laughs> Ledger's just like standing there, like, <laughs> it's just like super awkward now that you know that it wasn't intentional. Yeah. It's a fun scene. In that scene, what, first of all, that'd be super freaking scary to be in a freaking sword fight, like legit, like that. Yeah. And he's, his helmet had like a huge gaping hole, like where his face is. Yeah. Oh my God, man. <laughs> That's so scary. I don't know if I'd be able to handle that. Well, the good thing is that all of the actors had stuntmen. They were not allowed to not have stuntmen. And a lot of that had to do with like, it's grueling. And so when they were drawing, they tried to do CGI for it at first but they could not get like really good angles. Like it, it just looked awful. All the cuts that they got not great so they decided that they had to do the real jousting so they they hired an actual person who knew how to you know set up everything and he had to train all the stuntmen but Keith was like I want to do my stunts right but one his stuntman in particular got fucked up like tore like his back up or something happened to him and so he ended up having to get like 13 stitches or something crazy and so Heath was like I understand now and the shit happened what? twice in the same place on the on, on the sun oh guy my gosh. Oh my so I guess in that scene it, it definitely was <laughs> like I think we see Heath and where you see his face but all the other ones all stuntmen because yeah. very dangerous I'm so glad that they actually it wasn't CGI. I'm glad, uh, you know, poor, poor stuntman, but damn, yeah, this would have been a totally different movie if it was all CGI. So, but. yeah. Well, apparently they had to take that CGI budget and funnel it towards lances that were created that would convincingly explode upon impact without injuring the stunt riders. So, the body of each lance was scored so it would easily break and the tips were made of balsa wood and each was hollowed out with the holes filled with balsa splinters and uncooked linguine love it because then the linguine would just like shoot out in the crunch look very real real. danielle loves a crunch i do i love (laughs) a crunch (laughs) lances and bones (laughs) i do and we also learned wood is a good ASMR sound for me. When we yes. went to the museum in Chicago, the wood floors, when I would hear the creaks, Jackie does have a video of me really getting down to that. I did. <laughs> she was her own ASMR for a bit at the museum. <laughs> we just left her to her own devices because she was happy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another montage of William winning set to taking care of business 
and love uh, that's a damn bop man people don't give that song the credit it deserves I'm just there is another song towards the end and I have a story about that but there is <laughs> there are quite a few bops in this movie Johnny do you have a favorite song from the movie we will rock you also the dance scene I like oh with David Bowie I, I yes yeah mm -hmm. I like how it's like the classical and then it like goes morphs in, in. Yeah, that's yeah. stuff. I like that a lot. This the whole soundtrack is really good on this. Yeah, it really is. So William William's breastplate gets cracked while jousting. And so he's running around. He doesn't have any money because he hasn't won anything yet. Right. It, it it shows him winning throughout the tournament, but like the tournament isn't over. So he knows he's probably going to get something. He just doesn't have it right now. So he runs over to the blacksmiths, trying to convince them to fix his breastplate with the promise of payment later. And they're like, no promise, like payment up front. And then one is like, go talk to the farrier. If you don't know what a farrier is, they make horseshoes. And that damn Ken. I When I knew Jackie, she didn't know what the fuck that was. But Ken, <laughs> Ken loves that damn show about the swords. I, it is forged, quite addicting to watch. Forged in fire. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We watch lots of forging videos in this house. But I knew what a farrier was because my my friend from middle school owned a horse. Oh, I forgot we lived where the rich people lived. So the farrier, she's like, I, I need payment. No, thanks. And then... William kind of gets tricksy and he's like, oh, well, they said not to even bother coming over here anyway. And she's like, what? Because I'm a woman. And he's like, no, because they said you you wouldn't be able to to fix it. Damn. Like he got him. Yeah. 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 Reverse psychology to her. And I very much love this actress, Laura Fraser, because there's a movie called Virtual Sexuality that came out in the 90s, and it's very obscure. I don't think a ton of people know about it, and I love that movie. Yeah. So the farrier agrees, essentially, to, to fix his breastplate because... She's got something to prove now. She does. Yep. This... It's a total throwaway, but they show kind of a wide shot of the jousting pitch is what I'm going to call it. And you kind of see the crowd and stuff. And there is a guy walking around selling cat meat, and, cat meat and hot wine. And I'm like, <laughs> why? None of those sound appealing. <laughs> you wouldn't want some cat meat and wine? Oh, hot wine. Hot wine, yeah. And I'm sure terrible. it's a warm day. You're in all those layers and no one bathes. Oh my God. But yeah, give me some cat meat and hot wine. Sign they were up. just dying for the Moors to come over and teach them how to bathe. I swear to God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cat meat. Yeah. Gross. It's Delicious. like in Demolition Man where they're eating rats. Mm. Would That's you rather better. eat a cat or a rat? I'd rather die. <laughs> Danielle's going vegetarian <laughs> yeah I'd rather eat veggies because I okay look I'll, I'll say this I'm all down for mystery meat as long as I don't know don't tell sure. me that's fair don't don't, tell me. don't advertise it as cat meat right just say <laughs> meat on a stick and I'm there I love me some street meat I do oh, yeah. I won't ask what it is <laughs> So this is when we're introduced to Count Adamar. Is that how you say it? Yep. Yeah. I just wrote the count for the rest of the movie. So yeah. Yeah. But he is the leader of the Free Company, which is his army that is stationed in southern France. Currently. So is he attacking France? No, I think it's just like, you know, how they like station troops just in case shit goes happens, down or okay. they're like protecting borders i'm assuming okay and william sees because count the count is sitting next to jocelyn so william sees jocelyn again asks about her name again yeah because he's in someone introduces jocelyn to the count he's mm -hmm. like i've been waiting then you know meet you or whatever he's trying to spit game but he's so like conceited and cocky that she's not even really interested per se 
And when William comes up, he's not even paying attention to anything. He's just like, let me get them digits, boo. You know? <laughs> yeah, her, her eyes light up when she sees William too. Yeah, yeah. I would too. Okay. To hating his guts to seeing, seeing, yeah. And the, the, the way they explain jousting through the count, explaining it to Jocelyn was a really nice touch. Because like, obviously- not very many people are familiar. <laughs> had no idea what was system. going on. <laughs> I was so like, was, yeah, count. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very good way to explain to the audience how the scoring worked while making it flow within the movie. Was yeah. anybody else counting how many horses William probably got because he knocked people off with that one blow? Yeah, I was like, they should have so many horses. <laughs> They're not fighting yeah. over who gets to ride next now. <laughs> so that was one of the things. If you knock the person out the horse, you got to keep keep that horse. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's some extra coinage for him. You know? Yeah. But I just like I was mad because I didn't see that like come to fruition. And I was just yeah. like, mm, it would have been I'm cool counting. to have a long line of horses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, like at the end of Vegas vacation, where he's like, yeah. put a dollar and got a car, put a dollar and got a car. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, William is so smitten with Jocelyn's beauty. The count starts calling him out, asks him his name. He momentarily is like, huh, what? And so he's like, oh, you don't know your own name. You're an old armor. Like just, just trashing him. It was it was hard to watch the poor <laughs> babe. He just got slaughtered. Yeah. And soon after is the jousting competition. And Chaucer does something that is super brilliant. He, in his, when he's announcing William, he knows he needs to get the hearts of the like commoners and not just herald to the noblemen. And so he kind of, turns around to the commoners and is like, it's my pleasure to introduce all of you to William and kind of hypes him up in that way. Yeah. Because they they need the fans. They need people coming in to see William and wanting William to compete so that he keeps getting entered or can continue going to these tournaments. And he turns to William and says, I got their attention. You go win their hearts. And so that's, that's awesome William's night. goal. But William is just like, did she see me after that? <laughs> <laughs> he don't care about the comedy. He just no, no, no. Jocelyn. <laughs> the, the Count does make an observation that William is fearless because the slit and the helmets are very, very small just so they can kind of see their opponent. But almost all nights, as soon as like they get close to their opponent, opponent, they tilt their head up to protect their eyes where William is always focused on the opponent. He's yeah. not worried about losing his eyesight. And I think it's like, it really speaks to William because number one, that he hasn't had formal training. Cause I'm sure that's something like a tip that like, well, the count, taught. the count does mention that he has no like form yeah like whatsoever which is a tip off that he probably wasn't trained because they all like you said they've all been they all have the similar technique yeah yeah like standard standard ways of doing it yeah yeah and then it also speaks to william like he has nothing left to lose yeah like if he does it this it's all or nothing for him he he's been a squire his whole life and this is his one shot like m and m spaghetti <laughs> spaghetti spaghetti do, do not miss your chance to blow <laughs> like this is his one shot to make something of himself and so he's going for it so it was a really neat observation that had a lot of depth to it and explained a lot about William's character and just like one little and if it, it, it's like a blink if you and you miss it scene too mm -hmm. yeah I think is this where he also says that like he'll win the whole tournament for her the count 
So the opponent William is facing, I think they have their first round and like the opponent's done, but like wants to bow out with honor. Right. And so William's not going to just like completely annihilate him or whatever. And Mm -hmm. so he kind of just lets him kind of not default. Well, they, they call pretty much. It's like a tie essentially, or they, they both a draw. Yeah. Yeah. A draw. They both do. They, you know, it looks like they're going to go after each other and then they both lift their jousting sticks. Lances. Right. Right. (laughs) They lift those and people are surprised by that. And that the count actually mentions that like it's weak. Right. Which is telling about him where it actually shows that William is showing him grace. And so Mm -hmm. he said, yeah, showing grace is weak. And so I don't want to have babies with you. If you think that (laughs) (laughs) that's a red flag on the play. Yeah. So now it's the night they're all just sleeping. It looks like a stable. Like they're just all in the hay. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing. You know what I'm going to say, right? I love a shared bedtime situation. It's fun. Great. We're all friends. We're cool. But there's no fucking way I'm going to have your toesies (laughs) in my motherfucking (laughs) face. As much as I know y'all ain't wearing no shoes and not one of you has had a lick of bath water in days. There's no way. Yeah, it was just all bad. It was, it was just, no. but did y'all, did y'all notice it? That's all I want to know. Yes. And William, okay. but William did not because he's just pining over Jocelyn. I'm like, it's there. It's right there. You don't smell the feet. <laughs> and for someone, oh, we missed a pretty integral part of <laughs> the beginning of the movie where William has this saying and he's like, I can change my stars. And so that's kind of his philosophy that has guided him on his journey, meaning that he can change his lot in life and be anything he wants to be. So hyper-focused on changing his stars, we later find out like his dad pretty much gave him to uh, Sir Ector as like a young child so that he could learn what it is to be a knight. And so- We've gone through this whole journey, 12 years of him serving Sir Ector so he can learn the ways of the night. He gets his opportunity and we're going to throw it away for a girl. Yeah. I was, I was thinking about like, he's, he's making a lot of decisions for a lot of people that really only benefit himself. You know? Yes. It's yeah. I don't know if I was his buddy, I'd be like, dude, (laughs) <laughs> go for the girl man but i just want to sleep in a comfortable bed right. yeah do it on your own time right, yeah. right. Exactly. like let's get through this year of tournaments and then you can go do and fuck whoever you want it's right fine. <laughs> i thought about it as i was watching this movie and i was like i still would have very much enjoyed this movie even if there was no love story a hundred percent that's what i thought too i just needed his journey yeah that's all like, i needed I don't I, I don't think it was needed at all and I feel like he had more passion for the rivalry he had with the count than he did with this fake ass romance yeah. like he was showing that and acting like he cared about her but the passion was really for count yeah mm-hmm. he loved the count he did he loved it. <laughs> So the next day is when, oh, when he's talking about how he can't sleep, love has given him wings. One of, uh, I think it's Roland says, no, it's Watt that says women weak in the heart and without your heart, you cannot win. Is it Roland or Watt? One of them. Roland, Watt was only thinking about who he wasn't getting any insight. (laughs) Watt was constantly like beaten up on Chaucer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also Danielle. I feel like this movie holds up to your white girl diversity theory. Yes, there is a blonde, a redhead, and a dark haired man. And I also think one of the reasons why they picked Shannon is because she 
the dynamic of him being blonde and her having brunette hair sometimes you don't see a lot of times where they match up two blondes it's super weird I I don't know I mean they did it with Matthew McConaughey and Kate Hudson but I don't always see that I always see that mix yeah it's interesting yeah Johnny I have a theory that (laughs) white people look at diversity by hair color and (laughs) think about it like every tv show movie or whatever it's always like a competition between a blonde and a brunette or a that's how you show like you can't have two main girls that are brunettes for For some reason i'm going straight to buffy and yeah it's the the one with red hair Mm -hmm. red hair blonde hair dark hair so yeah Yeah. cordelia was the dark Mm -hmm. hair buffy's hair no matter like we know Sarah Michelle Geller's hair is not blonde. Why are you trying to play these <laughs> right. games? Yeah, Same that's with an it. theory. I think there's. I think you have some legs to to stand on there. Right. Mean Girls, because we have yeah. Katie who's a redhead, Regina George who's blonde, and Gretchen with the Gretchen bl- Wiener. Brown. Yeah. And if you have enough, you can throw in some more blondes there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> Danielle's theory holds up in this movie yeah. as well and it's an interesting take because it's all male instead of female di- hair diversity it's diverse yeah. this movie is very diverse y'all <laughs> <laughs> it's my seal of diverse approval <laughs> <laughs> surface level diversity <laughs> like a check mark that pr- <laughs> You know what that sound means? It's another episode of Game for a Movie, where we ask, are you game for a movie? Tell me, Audrey. There's no special features on that goddamn DVD, all right? Oh, wow. For Hansel, Hansel and Gretel? Gretel? Hansel and Gretel. You have the watch, DVD you watch it? Yeah. Hansel and Gretel. She basically has sex with it, somehow. No, it, foreplay. Yeah. Yes. She's, for, she's chair foreplay. They, I mean, they knocked it out of the park, which is why it's my number three. So. Oh! oh. <laughs> yes. I mean, I wouldn't be in it, because this movie doesn't have women. But, you know, that's you what I was right. It has one. You would have that. three lines of dialogue. So she has three. Oh, okay. So I'm actually going to get, like, I actually get, like, I earn my, my my four sentences of dialogue rather than, like, here, I'm a paycheck. You just stood there on the screen. You're a sexy lamp. Anyway, we're not Phoenix, too. Uh, so, no. So no. No. <laughs> no. 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 Because they really hate each other, so we get to enjoy some wonderful comedic scenes of them hating each other so much that they get into physical altercations that include her biting detective ex-detective phillips's dick okay but we don't okay i i know all of those words were english but the way you <laughs> constructed yeah, them i'm lost right. not, i'm not playing their races <laughs> on them very well for those who haven't rated us or uh, liked or given us a review, don't say that we haven't given you anything of value after listening to this podcast. You now know the difference between an R-rated dick and an NC-17 X-rated dick. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening to Game for a Movie, where we ask, are you game for a movie? We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 So the next day, this is when the count's like, I'm going to warn this tournament for you. Yeah. she just like rolling <laughs> her eyes like oh yeah like you and everybody else he can't read a room yeah and, yeah well, that's and the she... thing man she's just like totally giving off like leave me alone vibes mm-hmm. and he's just not picking up on it nope well know. and she she does call him out too she's like you win a lot like are you really winning for me or are you <laughs> just winning for you and calling it winning it for me like not feeling it, sir. No. But she does see William and the little twinkles back. And so her maiden goes over and gives William a token. So she's also kind of putting it in the count space of like, nah, I don't need you to win this tournament for me. I got my sight set on another. So he has her little handkerchief. And the count has a fist on his lance. Yeah, it's badass. It's something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so extra that he has a freaking fist on his yeah it's an <laughs> iron fist <laughs> very interesting um, they the, the the count knocks the win out of william 
dents his breastplate on the first hit. He comments that he hits like a hammer. So now they're talking strategy. They're like, okay, well, if that's how he always hits, then if you like turn your shoulder, it'll glance off. It won't be a direct hit and it'll lessen the blow. And then William's like, but if he, if that's not usually like, if he switches it up, right. I'm fucking dead. Like, yeah. And, and Roland's like, you're it's, it's, it was a, a gamble. Yeah. <laughs> it's a risk worth taking and they are chanting his name so he has kind of captured the heart of the people and the count hits the helmet off of william on the second pass so he has like literally has his bell rung we do get a flashback to a young william and this is where we get all of the exposition about someday he's going to be a knight and then his dad encourages him says he'll do anything and he gets his quote from a gentleman in stocks Uh, and he's just like you can't change your stars as he's like and so that's kind of where he gets his inspiration for a man can change his stars. And essentially the count wins. He comes back and says, come see me when you're worthy of fighting me, essentially. So challenge extended. Yeah. I mean, from here we get a montage because William is very, this is where the passion comes from. Like all he can see is red. He's so pissed off. And so we see a ton of tournaments. He's constantly winning. And so William does win. He just doesn't win the he main wins prize. He wins second, second place. Yeah. So he, oh, he gives sorry. the farrier her money. He pays off the debt gambler. And he, when he pay, when he pays, she, she does ask him if she, if they can take him, take her to France and they mm-hmm. like kind of say no. And then the hands maiden comes and says like that jocelyn wants him to accompany her or what is he wearing be- for the like meal or the what banquet, a banquet. Yeah. and so they have to figure that out and then they have to figure out how to dance and they have to figure out how to like sew him a <laughs> tunic so he can get ready and luckily kate does teach them how to dance because when <laughs> Chaucer Chal- tries to do it he's like horrible at like getting and of course him and Watt start fighting as usual yeah. and then they go to the banquet and when they get to the banquet like the count is such a dick he's so jealous because clearly he can tell something is off about William that he just like doesn't feel like royal noble, royal, noble right yeah. so he he kind of challenges him to to do the dance of his where he's from you know William don't fucking no. He tries to add some claps and twirls or whatever, but luckily Jocelyn kind of jumps in and helps him. And that's Johnny's scene where they play David Bowie's song. And oh yeah. And I, I do love really, I thought it was really cool how they they taught the group of dancers like three or four moves and then everybody just instantly got it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, just <laughs> choreographed. Just like cool. she's all that. They <laughs> exactly. all know this, this choreographed so dance, but they have they have a ball. And they and look I, great. That outfit he wore at that at that uh, banquet. I was like, damn, that's a slick, it's a slick vest. I know Ken <laughs> like that vest. Sure. It's a slick ass know. tunic. She <laughs> and jocelyn again she gave looks nothing but looks in this whole movie and that green dress and the way that like it flowed it was Mm -hmm. very beautiful yeah very nice so the next scene is because kate got paid she's kind of part of the group now she makes william new armor and in making him new armor she figures out a way to temper the steel so it's lighter and stronger and so and then she puts in her 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 nike swooshes yeah Yeah, it's like a dual nike swoosh insignia so what chaucer's trying to say is just do it was way before right exactly (laughs) so and and they're like this isn't gonna work like this armor is all wrong it's too light it's too small like it's not she's like no I I figured out a better way to heat the steel and they're like not believing it but she so they're like well she's like test it out so they take a literal ramrod and have him stand there and they run full force into his chest he's like 
I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> like yeah, that, that was, was a risky very, little game. <laughs> very dangerous. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they're in the competition. The knight before him was facing off against the black knight of what, what was his title again? I can't remember. I, I don't. It, 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 I, Prince they call Edward. him. Yeah, it's Correct. Prince Edward, and yeah. it, isn't it Black Prince of Wales? Black Prince yeah. of Wales. Yeah. 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 So the count figures out that it's Prince Edward <laughs> that he's about to joust and he, he forfeits because he doesn't want to go against a royal. And they have discussions and then it's it's William's turn to go and they're trying to figure out like why did it get for certain information why the count forfeited. And as William is about to joust this this night that what's his name Chaucer <laughs> runs up and says that it's <laughs> Edward and it's a forfeit and they're all ready to say all right we'll forfeit as well and then at the last second William is just like no we're gonna do this so he starts going Prince Edward sees him and he gets all hyped up he calls for his lance and they go at it I forget who won or if it was a draw I'm not I sure. think they both did I feel like they both hit each other I, yeah, it was a legit battle. Yeah, sure. yeah. I don't know who the winner was, but at the very end, when they came face to face, and William says that he knows it's you know Prince Edward, and Prince Edward looks at William and he's like, and "You know who I was? You, you know, you know who I am?" And he still fought, and it was just kind of like a mutual conversation back and forth, which was pretty cool. Very brave of William to do mm-hmm. that. Very brave. Very uh, brave. The count was not like, he was like, what the hell is happening? Why would you do that? <laughs> no. And yeah. William ends up winning the tournament because of this. And so they're like, you're the champion. Like you're, you, you won. And he's like, I'm not the champion until I beat the count. And so now William has a vendetta <laughs> against the count. Jocelyn then wants to meet at the banquet again. And William's super frustrated because the count withdrew. Yeah, this is like super weird because like what in this scene when they're Jocelyn's just trying to be flirty and stuff like that. And this is like the first time we see William kind of be a, a dick essentially, right? Yeah. Like. He's not even, it's like he can't even get his words out. He's enraged essentially, but in such a weird way and taking it out on her and just kind of calling her a stupid girl. It's just. Yeah. Super frustrated all around. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Not a good look, William. Not a good look. And and he, he does call her. So he, he, he kind of calls her out like pretty much all you do is care about your clothes and she says what is a flower good for or a flower is only as good as its petals and he comes back he's like a flower is good for nothing and i was like damn william digging yourself a hole he also calls her a silly girl and she claps back she says better a silly girl with a flower than a silly boy with a horse in a stick and she should have said small stick that wasn't really (laughs) (laughs) and then we get what (laughs) late on the comeback with a it's called a lance (laughs) hello (laughs) (laughs) so now is another montage more of william winning this is when the count is called back to his army at the south of France. And it felt like Prince Edward did it on purpose. Yeah, because he called him to, to, the, to the lines. Yes. Uh, be with his company. Yeah. So it felt like, like Prince Edward was giving William an advantage by pulling the count back to his army. Yeah. And so the count requests all the tournament results and he's flipping through and it's all just William's crest. Yeah. Mm. Every single tournament, William is winning. The count is And William, meanwhile, has realized he was a dick and needs to right the ship with Jocelyn. And so he's having Chaucer write this letter and it's, he's not one with the words. He does say some, you know, he spits some nice lines here and there. And this letter is like a combination of every one of the group gives Mm -hmm. like a different line that they would, you know, live by or say to their gal 
or food if you're Watt. And even Kate like helps with the ending. And I think Watt is the one who takes it to Jocelyn. Mm -hmm. And obviously she's (laughs) ready to drop her panties for this, you know? This is a beautiful letter. I hope you're right there. (laughs) She is just like, if she was a cartoon, she would just have heart eyes. Yeah. And she is a hundred percent on William. And Watt does say he was hoping that you'd write a letter back or send a token back with me. And so now we are in Paris preparing for the tournament. Watt is walking up after going to see Jocelyn and giving her the letter. And, and he's like, yeah, she loved it. It was great. And, and William's like, you got anything for me? <laughs> got anything for me? And so what very begrudgingly gives William a kiss on the lips. <laughs> Interesting. William <laughs> is not phased. William is stoked. <laughs> <laughs> I just was like, I, all I could think of is that I know they brush their teeth. That's like, <laughs> just, they're also dirty. Yeah. They're so dirty. So, oh, and when composing the letter, they're throwing out ideas and like some of the ideas, not so great. Like talk about her breasts, talk about her neck. Well, I, I feel like William, did William come up with the breast thing and, and, or I guess the guy, yeah, the other guys. Edgar. I think Ed, Edgar. Edgar said yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> who's Edgar? Not uh, Edgar. Roland. 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 Oh, yeah. I, I knew what he all. meant. <laughs> y'all, y'all are, we're having your own conversation. <laughs> like, yeah, Edgar. <laughs> and so uh, uh, they're in France. Uh, Watt and Roland, not Edgar, and Chaucer are in a bar shit talking with the French. And they're like, oh, William's going to win the whole tournament. You want to bet? And essentially, it's like they're betting everything that they have. Have um, they learned nothing? They haven't. I was haven't. there since this was my first time watching it, knowing that they had all this in the line. I was very anxious <laughs> watching the next few scenes because yes. when William does see Jocelyn in person, he fucks up the shit again. So this scene is gorgeous to me. The cinematography of this scene. So I believe... They're in Notre Dame. Oh, wow. And that's only from my knowledge of Notre Dame being in Paris and visiting it one time. But did they act? I don't think they shot anything in Paris. I think they shot everything in Prague and in. Well, um... It's supposed to be Notre Dame because oh, they're okay. in Paris. Gotcha. So this scene, it, it is a dance. Like she is so happy. So they're like close together and the whole scene up until the last very last bit is an extreme wide shot and as they're talking the camera is moving with them as they're and it looks like a dance as they're kind of talking and then arguing and she's like backing William up and then he's talking and backing her up it is so gorgeous but essentially yes William fucks it up again because she wants more poetry William is not a poet (laughs) <laughs> and he, he, he doesn't breath. know what to say yeah. Yeah. yeah your breasts and your neck that's all <laughs> I got and then he says that he's going to win the tournament for her and we we see earlier in the movie when she's talking to her like maiden or whatever Chris what is it Christine Christiana she says William is the only one who hasn't offered to win the tournament for her Mm -hmm. and so this kind of shows like a tide change that you know because he's been so focused about beating the count that he thinks that's the kind of thing that she would want and she's telling him what she wants I want the poetry bitch Mm -hmm. and he's he just like gets back into a corner and very frustrated with her and says like he he can win the tournament and now she's pissed and she pretty much says if you want to show me love, you don't win the tournament kind of situation. Yeah, lose if you yeah. want to prove your love to me, which is a shitty thing to ask. But these are noble people. She doesn't know he's depending on the money. So it's true. we could play these games in her mind, you know, essentially. Also in this scene, two other details. 
the bad water CGI where I, she's I, in my notes. I was like, she, what is that? What is that? <laughs> I felt <laughs> like the Harry Potter scene. <laughs> you already know. Yeah. So weird. it's pretty terrible and then when William walks in just showing that he probably hasn't been in many churches he uses the holy water to slick down his hair <laughs> and he's like spritzing it everywhere like his body washes it, which is that you know what that's exactly how he bathed I know it <laughs> I know it he's like ooh clean water spritz 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 <laughs> clean <laughs> my monthly bath time so now William is torn like he he's supposed to lose the tournament tournament all of his friends are depending on him he doesn't know that they fucking bet that he's gonna win now and so it's stakes are high and Neil's anxiety is higher <laughs> <laughs> yep and so and he tells her, I will not lose. And she's like, well, then you don't love me. Mm. Yeah, so he ends up just getting his ass handed to him in the sense that he, like, doesn't even try to a- attack or joust with the other guys. He just lets them hit him. Mm-hmm. And he is, like, constantly doing it. So, yeah, he's getting his ass handed to him. He's constantly losing. And then when they finally kind of like get a break, they do this, the, he, his arm is in, he, I guess he's trying to pop his shoulder back in, in this weird contraption that should look like it hurt. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing right now? And he's like trying to win from for Jocelyn. I, I'm trying to lose for Jocelyn or whatever and all this nonsense. And they're like, oh God, we're screwed. And then the handmaiden lady, Christiana, comes with the message saying, now to prove your love, you must win. (laughs) So he has to win pretty much every single match from now on to be able to pull it around and win the tournament. Yep. And I'm like, this girl is playing games. And I mean, obviously he didn't know that that his crew made the bet and all the Mm -hmm. money was on the line. Yeah. But I mean... Again, what are we doing? He he's yeah. all his all his people are there are banking on him winning so that they can like feed their families and stuff like that. Yeah, but like everyone's like, whatever. I'll just lose. Screw these guys. I like this chick. Yeah, I feel like this behavior would have made more sense if this was like about a nobleman, but he's mm-hmm. not. Bitch, you broke. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you have people depending on you, right? And. You need to be more careful. Like, I the whole time I had anxiety because I'm like, when are they gonna find out? <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, Jesus. But right. his friends are ride or die because they find out and they weren't immediately like, "Fuck you, I'm out." Like they're yeah. like, well, "Well, you better get back on that horse. Let me pop your arm back into socket with this medieval yeah. torture device." But now William is winning to "I want to take you higher" by Sly and the Family Stone. Love that. Nice. Love that for him. At one point, he hits a knight so hard that its helmet goes like flying into the crowd like a baseball, and they're like fighting over it. <laughs> <laughs> like, there are very subtle elements of like what we would perceive as like typical behavior Sport, sporting at, events. Yeah. At current sporting events, which is neat, except for the cat meat and hot wine. Well, I mean, it's not, we, it's a play on the hot dog. You know what I'm yes. saying? So, <laughs> yeah. yes. So it's the evening. William is really, really banged up. So <laughs> he's just chilling in his tent. He had decided not to go to banquet. And so Jocelyn kind of goes into his tent and was like, I missed you tonight. And they start <laughs> I love canoodling. <laughs> there he's i feel like he's glamping but my favorite part of this whole thing is that (laughs) chaucer sees them and he's like you ride him good you ride him all night kind of situation (laughs) like he's earned it (laughs) right (laughs) bitch can hardly move but let's have sex yeah and so like she realizes he like he had to have the surgeon come and like stitch shit up and so she's like pretty much i'll just stay on this side of you and so i mean 
he, he gets he gets his girl just um, I feel like he doesn't even feel guilty that he's kind of catfishing her because at some point you have to it, think that she's going to find out that you are not a nobleman right th- this is the scene where she finds out she figures it out on her own because she, when she comes in she's like they call you William and he's like well yeah that's my name she's like and she pretty much says in her flowery way of like pretty much I don't give a fuck who you are like I like I like you for you yeah I just feel like very unrealistic in this time to be able to to say something like that I don't know and and then William can sing she likes me for me (laughs) 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 not because I sing like Pavarotti or because I'm such a hottie I don't know this song you're referencing right now. <laughs> what is this? Because I'm not this? singing a Vertical Horizon. It's also because I can't sing. Anyway, <laughs> no, I, I just, I don't think I know the song. Honestly. I'll, I'll send it to you later. Okay, sorry. Now they're in a very foggy boat. Right. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't understand this. Like, I do. How, what is the distance that we're going and who set up these chains? And like, it's, it's like a rowboat, but they're not rowing. They pull in the chain across because I guess they're going back to England or something. Yes. So right. like, are we spanning the channel with these chains or like <laughs> spanning the English straight with these chains? Like I was very confused. It also gave me Harry Potter vibes. Yes. And they were going after the locket because that was the like same yeah. system the boat had but very confused but now we get another flashback and this is where we find out that his dad gave him up to sir ector so that he could be he could learn the ways of the night yeah and we learn like how long everyone's been away from home with mm-hmm. william being gone the longest of 12 with 12 years so yeah. we also lo- learn that kate had a husband at some point and he passed away i don't know if we learn it in the scene or not but just thought I'd throw that in there so okay so now it is the London World Championship Tournament and this is my favorite song Thin Lizzy the boys are back in town (laughs) and as it's playing we had a kiddo in our class who would get hooked on certain songs and ask to to listen to them and so he he would ask to listen to the boys are back in town and we'd have to play it on youtube for him and so that just gave me warm fuzzy is remembering him on top of like it's a very cool scene and it's a very appropriate song obviously because they're back in london they're back home they're gonna win this thing yeah but the count is also back one two three <laughs> I'm ah, back, ah, bitches! Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> oh, shit. Excellent job. Thank that you. That was great. And he and William exchange words. And William's like, you're going to look up at me from the flat of your back. And the count's ah! like... <laughs> He's been waiting his whole fucking life to say that shit. He's been yep. practicing. Yeah over and over and the count's kind of like are you here for the trophies the horses or the women and William kind of counters is like it's funny you put them in that order (laughs) and then this is when the count's like oh by the way I'm talking to her dad we're in negotiations for us to be married okay thanks bye (laughs) (laughs) he was like jerk open wide I'm about to shit in your mouth (laughs) (laughs) pretty much and so there's more of William winning. He he hasn't gone against the count yet in jousting. And it's kind of the end of the, the tournament for the day. And William is going into town because it's where he's from. And he sees this little girl. She's super excited. She's like, oh my gosh, you're my favorite knight. And when we pretend to be knights, I pretend to be you. She's fangirling. And he's like, oh, I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm actually from here. Why? Why? See, again, the anxiety is so high. (laughs) Which I guess she narks on him because that's the count is talking to a lady who points. I don't know. 
like it, it's very ambiguous whether or not the little girl ran her mouth after this encounter oh, jerk. but essentially he asks or he tells her uh, i'm i'm from here i used to live just down there i'm sure my dad's been dead for a while and she's like no 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 he's still alive he looks out that window even though he's blind let me tell you william why like <laughs> why are you running your motherfucking mouth we have come so far you should be actually more on high alert that people might fucking recognize who you are your people are from this town that means that there was somebody a cousin an uncle that probably looked like you <laughs> if jackie or johnny was walking around that's a kindly i know <laughs> come on <laughs> <laughs> like what is he doing what is he doing yeah and he's like super famous at this point too it's, yeah you can't just walking. be walking around william by yeah. the way yes i've been secretly hiding that i am not a nobleman and i have been conning everybody and i'm from here my social security number is <laughs> one one Two, two, two. <laughs> like come on man that was that instantly not the number one talked about thing in the entire city even the little girl i'm sure the little girl was just like you'll never believe the information that i have <laughs> <laughs> give me your tickets to the tournament and i'll spill the beans right <laughs> like oh i i want to talk to the writer i want to <laughs> talk to the director slash writer why why is this like i feel like the thing that would have made more sense if it's the count all these clues that show that he's not quite noble would have had someone look into his you know background for sure but william like the little girl tells him like no that dude is still alive and so he goes up there and at first he's like pretending almost that he's his own herald and he's like i've come with word of william blah 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 but the dad who is blind but still fixing fishing line because he got to eat he's like william is that you and so they they kind of chat all night and catch up and dad's so happy and then william sneaks out his window but that's when the count is in town and a lady is like he lives there and the count sees William sneaking out of the window so he has connected the dots yeah goes to the dad and, and real quick, like, real quick. I, yeah. I need to I need to talk about this this scene I feel like you glanced over this scene <laughs> okay sharpening. sorry this scene was so freaking impactful <laughs> all right so we have the green mile when John Coffey is put to death we have Marley and me, and we have the scene where William meets his dad after 15 years, and his dad asks him, has, <laughs> has William finally changed his stars? And his son says, yes, he has. And then they embrace. I'm tearing up thinking about it right now. <laughs> oh. So oh, my God. I love that scene so much. Hands down, favorite scene of the, of the entire movie right there. Oh. Yeah. It, okay. it was that was a very sweet scene yeah. where where William has finally come home. His dad let him go so he can become a knight. He has become a knight and he has found his way home. Yeah. But the next day, his friends like pull him into an alley and they're like, shit has hit the fan. They know who you are. They're going to arrest you. You need to run. Yes. And Jocelyn, I mean, to Jocelyn's credit, she shows up and she's like, I'll go with you. Like hundred percent. I'm all in let's run. And he's like, got to beat the count. Yeah. That, this was also a really great scene. How he goes from person to person, just, I, I just like, what do I do? And then every single person he looks at just says, run, run William. And then he's just like, he thinks about it. And he, he's just says, no, I'm not going to run. Mm -hmm. That was also a, a, a teary eyed moment for me. Back to back scenes. All yeah. I was thinking is that song, Run Forest Run. I was like, Run, will you run? Run, will you run? Get out. What are we talking about? I got to yeah. beat the cow. You about to get hung. <laughs> yes. Ugh. Well, and he's like, I am a knight. And they're like, Maybe in your heart, but on paper, <laughs> you're no knight. 
And we're in the real world, William. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, like, he's very resolute and like, I am not running. And Roland's like, okay, all good things must come to an end. Let's end them together. So William walks up to like the town square. He's like, I'm here to compete. And he is arrested, taken to the dungeon. The count meets him down there and proceeds to not only verbally abuse him, but also beat the shit out of him while he's like, like he has a stick over his like shoulder stock thing. Yeah, just... yeah when i tell you my anxiety level is so high <laughs> at this point in the movie i'm like william how are we getting out of this okay how are we going to overcome <laughs> Well, Danielle, I'll tell you. The next scene is William is in the stocks in the like town square. Everyone's taunting him, throwing fucking lettuce at him. The kid that was waving at him from the well earlier now like slaps him in the head. Bitch! <laughs> it's so funny. The little kid slap on the head. That cracked me up. And so, but his friends still ride or die. Roland walks up with his stick. He's he's ready to defend his man. William's like, no, let them have me. But then Watt comes in, running his mouth a bit. <laughs> you know, he's a bit fiery like his hair. So Kate comes up with her, her forging hammers. Chaucer, it, it's like... <laughs> the Avengers. Avengers and then there are some men in black cloaks that walk up and put off it's me the black knight <laughs> and Prince Edward walks up to him he's like we're both we were both trying to hide who we were and we weren't successful at it your men love you and that would be enough for me to remedy this situation but you the fact that you also fought me knowing who I am when you should have withdrew shows what kind of person you are and what kind of like you are a knight that yeah. that's what a knight would do and so he orders immediately immediate release of William has him kneel he knights him now we're ready to fucking rock yeah, that, that's just, also another tearjerker. But did did the prince, because the prince says that he discovered that William has a long historic line of nobility and mm -hmm. any look into it would be in contestation. I don't know the word that he used, some big fancy word, but essentially he was a line, he was, you know, saying that William was noble from a... Yeah. From a ancient relative because like I, I was like i don't i thought like only the king or queen could actually knight someone so i was you know like is this real <laughs> i wonder i wonder if this is the time of the crusades and maybe king richard was off on a crusade so prince edward was essentially acting as yeah. king like prince john was in robin hood yeah okay cool. so the count plays fucking dirty and he has had had someone fashion his little fist end mm -hmm. of his lance out of sugar and boot black and so it breaks really easy and when it breaks he's sharpened his yeah. his lance tip that was kind of weird like he just wasted one of his lances because for the camera's sake he just breaks it just to be like oh oh, oh okay cool yeah he just wasted one of those my guy what are you doing yeah and after the first round where like it's very obvious William is impaled and they pull the impalement out of him and it's a sharpened tip like isn't that grounds for disqualification what <laughs> what, what are the rules can you just like call foul referee yeah umpire. <laughs> apparently there are no rules in jousting yeah. And so William's like, okay, we got to go again. I'm just going to try and take, take it somewhere else. And then uh, when they're starting round two, they let William know Jocelyn's here and she's with your father. So they've, oh. she's brought the dad. She's t telling the dad what's happening oh. during the jousting competition. I love that. I was probably crying, bawling my eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> So 
so the the second round like he in like hits him dead center like essentially crushes his breastplate and so William's like take it off take all the armor off I can't breathe he's barely able to grip the lance at all with his injured shoulder and so he's like lash it to my arm like we this is the last round we got to do it and Chaucer takes this opportunity while William just to buy William some time probably to recuperate and get the land situated it's like oh I forgot to do my introduction so he does introduction and is able to introduce William as his own name so Sir William Thatcher and his friend says that's your name your father heard that and that was a really special moment too (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I i i i heard that little, a little waiver <laughs> i was just saying because again y'all ain't asking how i was doing during this time how are you how are daddy you? now hi pete <laughs> <laughs> anxiety and i'm like william what we got up our sleeve what we gonna do <laughs> we tore up bro <laughs> bow out gracefully your dad still loves you (laughs) Uh, he does not bow out instead he kind of holds back so round three starts flag goes down the count starts charging towards him and william kind of waits and i think my hypothesis is that either this is to like throw the count off his game or to kind of see where the lance is positioned and be able to position his lance better. Mm-hmm. Um, or, anyway, or to look badass. He looked really cool while he was just waiting there. I think he, he like, did. Inside, yeah, it was it was cool. So he he finally goes and he yells his own name. <laughs> <laughs> well, y'all, that like. Oh, is this Braveheart? Like, what's going on? Oh, it was so freaking epic. But he does it. The Count is on the flat of his back looking up at William. He is dis- dismounted. Yep. The guy off the horse. Yeah. Uh, yep. So William has won. It's a weird scene because he gets knocked off his horse. And it's like the scene that's behind me where they're all kind of like looking down with Adam. Like, well... So, but then like he he comes to I don't know if that was like was he in purgatory and they were talking to him <laughs> <laughs> like it didn't make a whole lot of sense but I did love that that scene but he comes to you and realizes like I fucking lost yeah. uh, so Jocelyn leans over tells dad he's won his dad says oh William like he's just so happy <laughs> <laughs> Did the, do you think that dad knew he was going blind that's why he sold william not Ooh, sold him but you know that's a good theory yeah maybe give him to probably take care of him a little bit because it just him. felt yeah. like his dad loved him so much it didn't make sense like i know he was trying to give him a better life but like yeah he was so young for him to yeah. do that i just felt like he knew something was like something was going on or mm-hmm. Or maybe he couldn't like afford him. It was just weird. Like, yeah, I I could see if the, like, he was just so poverty stricken that like he knew Sir yeah. Hector would have get, would be able to give him a better life than dad could maybe. Yeah. But Jocelyn greets him on the pitch and then Chaucer says, I think I'm going to have to write some of this down. And oh, yeah. <laughs> credits come up and it's ACDC shook me all night long and that is a night's tale nice let's see if there's anything we missed like i said earlier it was predominantly filmed in the czech republic and in prague during the summer of 2000 it turns out sir ulrich von leichenstein or stein is a real person he was a knight and an author that was thought to have invented the idea of chivalry and courtly love Hmm. not related to courtney love The lesser known sister, Courtly Love. (laughs) Heath Ledger met Heather Graham during filming because she was in Prague shooting from Helm. So that's when they started dating. And instead of rehearsing, the actors recall a two-week period of partying without looking at the script once. 
Yeah. So the director really pushed the studios to the studio to have them come early so that they could like rehearse. But really he wanted them, he thought the drinking it would bring camaraderie and show a more authentic friendship on screen. So it worked. It worked. Can't be mad at that. No. The mm-hmm. Black Prince and Jeffrey Chaucer were actually connected in real life. Jeffrey Chaucer's wife was the sister to Catherine de Rott, who married the Black Prince's brother, John of Gaunt. Mm. Oh, yeah. did, did not know that. So they were re- related in, in a way. It was kind of cool. Hegeland, the director said he wanted Bethany to be like a WWE announcer, but Benny refused to watch any WWE. But he, <laughs> he did get laryngitis from yelling in most of his scenes. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Those speeches were so good. So good. In the DVD special edition commentary, the director said that he intended to show what Jeffrey Chaucer Chaucer might have been doing that inspired him to write the Canterbury Tales during the six months in which Chaucer seemed to have gone missing in 1372. Let's see, is there anything else? And so, yeah, in the end credits there, where it was improvised, where they're like farting and like burping and kind of just being gross. The actors suggested to to do that because they all had been friendly. It was just like a fun camaraderie thing, but Columbia did not like it. And the director, Brian had Hegeland fought to keep it in and they let him keep it in, but they weren't happy about it. So I think- I'm glad that they had fun, you know? The, yeah. yeah. And Paul Benny, I think he said- uh, that it was just a good, good, good atmosphere on set. So that's, that's cool to hear. Yeah. It seemed like they worked hard and partied harder. Yeah. And if you didn't see our interview with Johnny, again, pause, go listen to it. It's really fun. But John actually makes custom rugs, which are really, really cool. And he does some pop culture rugs. He made one for... Uh, I did Blast and- Force, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and Stranger Things. Uh, Stranger Things, yeah. Yeah, I made uh, the, the the famous Hellfire Club. Ooh. Uh, so, Johnny, yeah. tell them how they can find you and check out your really cool, your craft, your craft. So, I'm on Instagram. That's going to be reds underscore custom underscore rugs. For TikTok, you can find me at Lloyd is Dumber. And just because I'm a big fan of Dumb and Dumber, now obviously <laughs> is the Dumber one. So Lloyd is Dumber on TikTok. When you said you can find me and I was like, at the club, bottles full of bub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have said that. But I'll be there too. I'll be there too. First. And as always, you can find us at No More Late Fees on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, or YouTube. And we'll start with you, John. Now that you've seen this, I'm sure you've probably seen this more recently, but as an adult, present day rating, what would you give this movie? There were some slow parts. There were some parts that, you know, looking back, just like kind of didn't make sense. And, you know, I have a different opinion a little bit on on William's self-fulfilling need. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, you know, those scenes that that hit me still hit me to this day. So I'll I'll keep it. I'll keep it at uh, would buy, would buy again. For sure. And I'm going to say it's a five-day rental for me. I had a lot of anxiety, <laughs> <laughs> but I had a lot of fun. It did get slow at times. I do agree. I And again, if it didn't have the love interest, I would have been kind of happy with that too. Well, we know my opinion on the love interest, the choice in actress, <laughs> as well as the choice of actor in the count. So I will as well give it a five-day rental. I could also do without the, the love story. I think it would have streamlined the whole movie, made it feel a bit quicker paced. And for a movie to feel slow in parts with so many montages is quite a feat. <laughs> yeah. It was a long movie. It was over two hours uh, mm-hmm. or no, yeah. uh, from start to finish, including the, the end credits. It was over two hours, but yeah. Um, and yeah. back then that was a lot. Cause I mean, I think we're used to that now with like the Avengers movies, some of these comic book movies, we it's long, 
But back then, besides maybe Titanic, we weren't really used to having really long movies like that. Mm -hmm. So anywho, if you have any hot takes or if you agree with me that those two roles were heavily miscast, hit us up at the quick drop. 909-601-NMLF, 909 601 Twat us at the tweeters or leave a voice message at our Anchor FM account and you could be featured on a future episode. And join us next week as we dive into spooky season with Final Destination. Avoid logging trucks. Always. <laughs> <laughs> And as always, be kind and rewind.